overreacting. If you've ever been through a casualty, if you've ever been through a difficulty, if you've ever been through something that was kind of traumatic in your life, it's possible you have a tendency to overreact when something comes your way. When you've been hit with something that you didn't expect. When you've gone through something that has really altered your life in some way. Maybe it's a breakup of a relationship or a loss of a job. Maybe it's a, a financial collapse, a, a health scare. Well, when you all of a sudden get some other news that comes your way, many times you think the worst. Many times you have a way of going into panic mode. God wants to help us with where we're at. The other day, um, it was around 3.30 in the morning, we, we happened to wake up in the middle of the night. I think my wife just took the dog out. Uh, we live up front there, right up the, on the opposite side of two walls that way. But I was about 3.30 in the morning, and I, I went to my office just for a moment, and the office is next to the bedroom. And when my wife just got done taking the dog out for a moment and we're, you know, and I happened to uh, hear it and I got up and I went to the office. Right when I went and I opened the office door, there was this uh, young man right in front of the other glass, uh, the vestibule on the other side of the glass. And he had a backpack on. And right when, right when I, I saw him, I, you know, my mind went back to, to a week ago when we were out of town. Nathan called us at like 3.30 in the morning and he, he said there is someone knocking on the door on the, this door here and they went in. And we were out of town and this is, a, you know, a worry uh, that we've had a few times. Uh, we live on Palatine Road here and, you know, there's some crime different times. One time our van was stolen and another time on the gas station. Now I'm scaring everybody. Uh, another time on the gas station here, uh, the police found someone dead in the car. And um, so these things have a way of projecting in your mind when something like this happens. But when this person, I just saw them there, 23, 24, and they had a backpack on, 3.30 in the morning, and you know, I have two little kids in, in the, in, uh, next here, but, but right away, I got defensive. Of course, that's, that's what we do, right, as parents? But you know what I did? I said, get away! You know, and I yelled, I wanted to scare them to try to, you know, I learned how police do it. That's what the police used to do to me in my younger days. They were trying to overpower me, saying, get me to back down, you know. So my brother-in-law is a cop, and you know, and I learned these tactics from him and from other people. So I tried the same, but it didn't work. He just stood there, and I was louder, get out of here, and you know, and uh, it didn't work again. Finally, I had my cell phone there, I called 911. And, you know, if you've ever called 911 before, uh, uh, usually people call 911. No, not on me. No, that's not true. Uh, uh, but, you know, the, the, the lady was you know, asking questions. I'm thinking, man, I could be dead right now. And they're still asking questions. You know, let's get to the point. There's an emergency here. Well, they said, well, are they breaking in? Well, no. Ah, yeah, they are. You know, you got to stretch it a little bit. But, you know, um, the cop came out afterwards and the police were there and they were a little longer than I wanted. You know, a few minutes or 10 minutes seems like an hour. It was probably 10 minutes later. And I, the, I opened the door, the front, you know, I was in my shorts, my t-shirt, and I said, what happens if this was, uh, you know, what happens if I'd be dead now? You know, he goes, well, I guess it would have just been 10 minutes late. I'm thinking, wow. If, uh, 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 no, I don't want to, there, there's, there's going to be a good conclusion to this illustration, so stay with me. So here's what happened. I kind of said something smart to the cop. And I said, and he took it, and I even said, well, I'll deal with it in the morning. And I shut the door and I went back. The next day I, morning I woke up, you know, I was uh, in the morning, and I thought to myself, I thought, I overreacted. Now I know that Nathan called me, uh, you know, uh, a few days before when I was out of town and told me about this and I, you know, I was a little worried and I, my mind went back to the car and this and other situations, you know, that we've had here before and, you know, we're living on a, a thoroughfare here. But I thought about it for a moment. Well, what happens if that person needed help? And, you know, and, you know, and you say, well, you did the right thing. Yeah, okay. But it's possible 
in conclusion that maybe I overreacted a little bit. As a matter of fact, I know I overreacted with the policeman. Now I'm going to get a ticket when he pulls me over next time. Uh, and he's going to really teach me a lesson uh, for telling him what I thought for a moment. But so often, we overreact to things that come our way. Your boss says something to you. And right away, your mind goes back to your last job, or maybe you don't even go back that far. You put up defenses. You're in a relationship. And right away, you know, you're, the person doesn't call you. And, you know, you're starting this relationship, and you start to think, well, you know, they don't like me, and you overreact. Many times, we have a way of overreacting to things that come our way. We're talking this morning about staying in peace. We're talking about being ruled in peace and not overreacting to all the different things that come our way. Why is it so important not to re-overact? Because you don't know what God is doing at that moment. You don't know what God is uh, repositioning in your life. You don't know what God is maybe doing at the end of it. You know, I thought of myself the next day, and I'm not saying I did wrong there. I'm just, this is an illustration. Maybe if I didn't overreact, he could have had a gun. It was just the day after the, the Fox Lake thing, and that was in my mind too, the policeman getting killed, and you know, you put those things together. But many times that's the way it is in our life. We have a way of overreacting, and we, it's possible we could miss what God is doing at that particular time. You know, I thought of myself the next morning. You know, I was hitchhiking. I, evidently, this person was hitchhiking. He was a young man. I was hitchhiking at a young age. I went from Chicago to the West Coast, uh, back and forth several times. And I, I'm sure that I was out in the middle of the night, and I needed help. Maybe the Lord was bringing someone, something by, whatever it may be. You say, well, it's 3.30, quarter, 4 in the morning. I understand that. But on my Facebook, I put that we're open 24 hours. You know, you could put these things on Facebook. Are you open Sunday? Churches do Sunday. Well, since I live here and we want to grow the church and we want to be available to everybody, we put that we're available all the time. Well, how do you know that this person didn't come across that or something and needed an emergency help? Well, many times I, I do there. This is not all the times I overreact. This is an example. But what about you in your life? There's a situation, you're, you're with your spouse, you're talking about something, and all of a sudden your spouse says something, and you begin to overreact, and now it becomes a flared-up argument. It becomes something bigger than it needed to be. It becomes something that is something that could have been dealt with a little easier, could have been, the fire could have been put out, but now it's a full-blown argument. And then things happen. You know, a lot of times, the things we go through could be prevented. Well, here's our, our now I got to stand up, but here's our text this morning. It's about overreacting. It's about uh, 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 Samuel, the people of Israel, that they were going through difficult times. You know, they were always fighting, uh, you know, survival mode. Many times we're in survival mode throughout the week. But, you know, they were, they were trying to stay alive. They were trying to make it the next day. And we have some scriptures here. Let's read a few. But when you saw that uh, Nahash, king of the Ammonites, was moving against you. You said to me, no, we want a king to rule over us, even though the Lord, your God, was your king. The next, we're going to break these up into three points like we do different times. So the first one is going to be 12, 12 and 13, 13, 6 and 7, and then 11, 12. These are three examples in a chapter and a half, two chapters, about how the people of God overreacted and it did not help them. It did not serve them well. What about the things in our life, and I'll get back to this, that we overreact to that don't serve us well? You see, God promises you that you're going to make it. God promises you when you, you know, accepted him as your Savior, your Lord, your Master, that he's going to take care of you. He's your God. He's your Savior. He promised you from the beginning of time that he is uh, over you and he, you're protected and you have the favor of God in your life. As a matter of fact, at one point, the, the scripture says that he knows every hair that falls from your head. Some of us, uh, me and my brother, uh, there's a few, sorry, uh, that have fallen from our heads. 
You know, I'm, I'm, I, I'm getting thinner every day here. Uh, uh, uh. Now he's getting mad at me. Uh, uh. But listen, but the Bible teaches that he knows every hair bond that's fallen. He understands what we go through. Well, if that's true, why do we get upset when we lose that job? If God says he's our provider. Why do we get so out of proportion when, when we have that health scare, that health report? And it seems like that rules our life for the next six months. Why is it that we go get out of peace then when we get a bad report or we have a bad, our job, something happens or our finance, we look and we don't have enough money there. It seems like then stress. Did you know that there's more stress and breakup of, of couples through financial affairs than ever? If God is our provider and he says, I'm your provider, then I will take care of you. But let's get back to here now. This is where three examples where the children of God kind of messed up a little bit. It says, when they saw that, they were moving against them. When they saw that, you know, that the, the, uh, the Amorites were moving against them. They were one of the enemies of Israel. We're moving against them. They said, we want a king. We want a king like, you know, uh, Samuel. We want a king because we're scared. Many times we get out of peace with God because of the things that come in our life, the offenses, the troubles in our life. We all have troubles. As a matter of fact, the scriptures say it this way, in this life, you will have trouble. Jesus said this. This is New Testament. In this life, you're going to have trouble. But he then went on to say this, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. So he's promised us, he's, he's promised us that he's going to take care of us. He said, he warned us that we are going to have difficulties. There's going to be dry periods. There's going to be hard times. There's going to be weekends that don't go well. Well, in that case, we got to be careful then that we don't mess up our destiny. That's what it's about this morning. That we don't overreact to a place like they did here, that we don't miss our calling what God has for us beyond that trouble that we're experiencing. You see, many times the enemy brings trouble in our life to ruin us, to bring us down, to stop us in our tracks. But God allows the trouble to come in your life to get you to where you need to be. What do you mean? The cross. Well, there it is. I don't have it. The cross was a tactic of the enemy. The cross was, was something that the enemy was used to stop Jesus from being the Savior of the world. To stop Jesus from becoming, you know, what, what the scriptures said from the beginning of time. To, like he talked about today, um, uh, Pastor uh, Franklin Jensen. Talk about how bringing it back together, healing. Well, that's the, that was what the cross was about. The enemy, though, tried to kill Jesus. But Jesus had a plan, and it's the very thing that reunited heaven and earth. It's the very thing. It was the miracle that God used. Here's what I'm saying to you. That thing in your life, you're looking at it as a cross. You're looking at it as something that you believe is going to bring you down. It's been brought in your life to cause harm. That thing is so big, it's, it's, it's so, you don't understand, it's, it's, it's an attack of the enemy, okay? We'll give you that part, it's an attack of the enemy. But see, the Bible says, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Right. So what that means to you is those things that the enemy brings in your life, the cross, that the Jesus, was nothing more than a stepping stone or part of the plan of God to help get you to where you need to be. I want to encourage you as we talk this way. The enemy was coming against them, the Amorites. There's the Philistines over here, the Amorites. There were the Gibeonites. There's, there's a lot of different ites around. And here's little Israel, the people of God. Many times that's the way you feel. You got this, your job, your finances, your health. The many things in life that encompasses life. And here are you. And these things attack you Tuesday, Wednesday, these different things along throughout the week. And sometimes it's hard for you to handle. 
But God uses these things, though, to help you. Well, this time around, in the first is it's the Ammonites. They were moving against Israel. When things move against us, when they crowd out the peace of God in our life, we get fearful. We worry. We, 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 we sometimes forget where God is in the big picture. And here's what it says. No, we want a king. So they were looking for another way of protection. And that's many times what we do. And it's so important that when things come against us, in this world you will have trouble, but be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. That's why you've got to fight the things you go through through what God says about your difficulties, your trials. God said that I will never leave you nor forsake you. Either he meant it or he didn't. You see, God is on your side. You're here today. And you've given him the first part of your week. Here's what I want to say to you. You got a covering over you this week. You got a blessing over you this week. You got the favor of God over you this week. And there's no weapon formed against you that can prosper this week. You say, I don't know if I believe that. Well, I'm here to convince you through the word of God that, that that's true this morning. That's why we have the teaching and the preaching. Jesus knowing it. That's why he said, "For don't forsake the gathering together. He knew that we need to be reminded. We need to be encouraged. And here's what happened here. It says, no, we want a king to rule over us. Sometimes we step out and try to get our own way because of insecurities. Well, I, I got to do that. I just, uh, my boss said this. Even though the Lord your God was your king. He says, we want this even though. Now here is the king you have chosen. The one you asked for. See, the Lord has set a king over you. You see, when we get so obstinate like this, God's going to give us our way. God's going to, you know, if we keep being persistent, God's going to allow us to have our way. But it's so important, my friend. When you're going through trouble, when you're going through hardships, when you're going through things, battles, you know, I make no bones about it. When I was in Hawaii, we went through a, a difficult time there. The ministry was, you know, and, uh, that I was in charge of. But then, um, you know, it seems like we were dealing with lots of different types of people. It was a, I was a, in charge of a, a Christian discipleship ministry. It was a, a drug rehab. And, you know, it seems like, you know, the guys at different times, we were getting them out of prison. They were, you know, times that, you know, you'd help them. And then sometimes, not all of them, because we had a lot of good ones. But sometimes, you know, their flesh would act up and they would try to hurt you. They would try to do things, and you know, it seems at one time we had uh, someone called OSHA on us, then they called the fire department, then they said they weren't eating right, and then someone said this. It seems like all we were doing is putting out fires at different times. That was my job to be in charge. You know, I had to make sure it ran smooth, and it was, it was a tough thing. Some of you understand some of these things like that. If you're in charge of something, things come against you. You know, I, 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 you know, it seems like there was so many different things. And eventually when I left in transition here, it seems like I was so inverse to people trying to attack that I always had my guard up. I always, you know, I thought, what's your angle? Because I was so used to, you know, people having an angle and trying to get something or hurt you in some way. Some of you have been hurt before. Some of you had some failure in your life. Some of you had some people do some things to you. A bad business deal. Some of you have had some bad news. And it seems like the only thing that you could see in front of you is skepticism. And where's the next thing going to fall? When's the next shoe going to fall? And you're here to protect yourself. You don't let anybody close. It's hard for you to get in a relationship. And, you know, you've been through some things. There's been some things that you've dealt with. You've lived life. In this world, you will have trouble. But you got to be careful in the midst of it that you don't somehow invalidate what God wants to do in your life. Here, the next thing it says here, when the Israelites saw that their situation was critical, the next point where they kind of overreacted, they didn't stay in peace. When the Israelites saw their situation was critical and that their army was hard pressed, they hid in caves and thickets among the rocks and in pits and cisterns. Some Hebrews even crossed the Jordan in the land of Gad and Gilead. They crossed back 
They, they went backwards. They were trying to go backwards. Sometimes when we're hard-pressed, when the situation looks critical, sometimes when we don't know how we're going to pay the bills, we then gamble. We do it another way. Well, I'm going to take it in my own hands. Well, I don't get, I'm not fulfilled, so I'm going to do it this way. When the Israelites saw that the situation was critical and that the army was hard-pressed, they hid. You know, sometimes when we go through the biggest challenges in our life, we stay away from church. Sometimes when we go through the biggest things in our life, we hide. You know, I told you about when I kind of was hiding. You know, uh, that's how I kind of got introduced to Joe. I kind of didn't think I wanted to get back in the pulpit again. I just didn't, you know, Chris, I just, like some of where you've been before. Nah, I, I don't know if I want this anymore. Maybe I'll go back to baking. Maybe I'll go back to what I knew, you know, where it's secure. You know, and I was in bed on a Sunday where I should have been in a church, this, and, I, and, and then I heard this guy preacher, this Joel guy that just took over for his dad. And he started talking about how God has a plan for your life and that you can make it. Here's what God wants to say to you. That you, your best days are still right out in front of you. And that he wants to work in your life. Listen, the enemy wants to feed you the bad news and get you to stop. God wants to motivate you to keep going. The enemy wants to get you thinking that it's, it's critical situation. It's big. Oh, it's big. Let me tell you something, my friend, my brother, my sister. There's nothing too big for God to handle in your life. There's nothing too big that God can't take care of. Let me tell you something. If he flung the stars in the sky, let me tell you, if he rose uh, from, the, from the dead and uh, as we celebrated communion, if death couldn't keep Jesus down, he's able to help you where you're at today. Let me tell you, Psalm, Joel says it all the time, Psalm 53, verse 6, the moment you pray, the tide of the battle begins to turn. The moment you pray, some of you prayed some prayers here. Well, it wasn't the best prayer. I don't care. You pray. God doesn't ask that you got to pray the best prayer. It's a heart towards God. You're here. You prayed by coming. You've turned your heart towards God. Well, listen. The moment you prayed, the tide of the battle begins to turn. That means God is working on your behalf. Stick with me because this next point is for some of you here. You're going to like this. But sometimes when we think that it's a critical situation, we hide. We, we say no. We shut the, we shut the curtains. We, we turn to alcohol. We turn to these things because we, we don't see any way out. Listen, some Hebrews, they even cross. Some of the Hebrews, some of the people, they were so discouraged. They said, ah, they went backwards. They went backwards. I remember when I, ah, uh, ah, uh, uh, forget that illustration. First thing, it's too long. We got some time elements here. What have you done? The third part here. What have, what have you done? Asked Samuel. Saul replied, when I saw that the men were scattering. Now, this is the third part here. When, when uh, uh, Saul, this is Saul now making bad decisions. It was the people of God in the first two points. Now, this is their leader was making bad decisions. Chapter 13, verse 11. What have you done? This is Samuel, the prophet, talking. Asked Samuel. Saul replied, when I saw that the men were scattering, and that you didn't come at the set time. Some of you, things haven't worked out in the time frame. Well, pastor, I've been coming to this church for two years. And I'm still dealing with problems. When I saw that things didn't happen in the set time. When it didn't happen in my time frame. When, you know, I began to get a little weary in well-doing. It says, what have you done? When I saw the men were scattering and you didn't come at the set time and the Philistines were assembling. Whoa, you mean when I saw that my situation wasn't getting better and I'm on my fourth job interview? As a matter of fact, this is the sixth, seventh, this is the 26th application I, I filled out. It didn't happen at the time frame I thought. Listen, what you need to do is stay in faith. Your challenge today is to stay in faith. 
believe that what God said is true. The enemy is trying to talk you out of it. God is trying to talk you into it. Listen, I, David said it this way. I've never known anyone to, he's talking about, you know, uh, beggars. I've never known anyone to, to go hungry for God. Meaning, meaning when he never saw lack, David was trying to explain that at the end of the day, God wins out. And here, here it says that the Philistines were coming against. Now before it was the Ammonites. Now, the, uh, uh, Saul's here and his people are leaving him. Clients are flat, leaving. Money's going out the checkbook. Your, your wife left. Your husband left. Uh, trouble on the job. I had problems with the Ammonites. I stayed in faith because I went to church. I held on. I stayed with God. But now it seems like it got to be a little long. I've been praying for that healing. It got to be a little long. So I'm taking it in my own hands. When I saw that, and not only the Ammonites came against me, now all of a sudden from the rear, the Philistines started to come against me. I got hit broadside. My transmission went out. And then I got that letter in the mail. There was, there was a credit card bill that was double what I thought it was. And I'm dealing with all these things. I'm in despair. It says here, Saul now took it in his own hands. Some of you are tempted to take it in your own hands and you say, God's way didn't work for me. It hasn't worked yet. Oh, I believe it's for that person. But for me, I'm not sure. It hasn't happened yet. I don't know if Joel, you know, Joel maybe for him and his blonde-haired wife, but I don't know about me. Someone take that out of that video. I got to go down there in a week or so. I don't want him to get mad at me. Uh, listen. And it was so easy to begin to think that it's not going to work in my life. God knows what he's doing in your life. He that began a good work in you is going to finish it. You are not too big of a project for God. You are not too, you have not gone too far south for God. You have not sinned too much for God to help you, to forgive you. As a matter of fact, his blood is able to cleanse you very clean. Listen, here's, here's what he says. The Philistines, and I thought, oh, when we go through trouble, that's when we start to think. Some of the stupidest things we could do is when we start to let our brain take over our spirits. Now, I'm not saying you shouldn't think. I'm not saying I did wrong there when I overreacted. But it's possible I could have missed something. I hope someone would, didn't do that to me. When I was hitchhiking, they picked me up at 3.30 in the morning. Matter of fact, I remember them taking me to a truck stop. Well, I didn't like the next ride after that. Uh, uh, that was a very uh, tough one. But listen, but, uh, but I remember when they gave me a sandwich. It's so easy to overreact when you are had things come against you, when you're so adverse to harm or discouragement. Some of you got a phone call and you don't even want to answer it because what next shoe's going to drop? Who's, who's, who's on the other end of there? Bill collector? No. Uh, jo, jo, no, no, they don't live here. You're so adverse to harm when it may be the next job is calling you. And the enemy is trying to keep you from your destiny by overreacting. But God wants to release you. Don't worry about those things you've been through. Keep going forward for God. He has you in the palm of his hand. Here, I thought, now the Philistines will come down against me. He started replaying what happened a year before. Well, I thought this will happen, and I, I thought they're going to come against me. Well, they probably were going to. But what the enemy has done, God raises up a standard. God is bigger than the enemy in your life. God is bigger than those troubles in your life. Those things that come against you, I, they are real. Some of the people accuse Joe of, oh, he's not a realist. No, that's not it. He's just learned to walk in peace in the midst of the storm. He's just learned. You don't think pastoring a church of 40, 50,000 people, there's problems? Sometimes I look at him, I, I think, how could he handle it? Man, I get uh, this many and, and, and my kids and I get out of peace so easy. And I, you know, and he has a smile on his face. You know, maybe he's just learned 
that you can't take care of, you can't deal with all battles, that you just got to keep walking with God every day. You just got to keep going forward. Maybe God just wants you to keep going forward. Put your shoulders back. Forget about those things. You know, I had a, sometimes it's hard to prepare for a message. Sometimes I'm, they drop in my heart. Sometimes they don't. Sometimes it's hard to pray. Sometimes, you know, it's easier to pray. Well, again, one of those uh, uh, weekends or this, uh, towards the end of the week as I was preparing. And I thought, oh, maybe it'll get a little better tomorrow. So I, you know, tried for several hours and I wasn't getting it. I wasn't feeling, I didn't think that the word was coming and I just didn't feel like God was talking to me. And then I, you know, thought, okay, if I sleep on it, then the next day, well, the next day, nothing changed. Whoa, Sunday's coming. Well, here's Sunday. And I thought, well, I'm going to get up early. I'm going to pray like I, I do. And, you know, maybe I'll feel more spiritual. Well, come Sunday, uh, it seemed like I was in the same mode as I was a few days ago. Oh, I wasn't anything terrible, but I just didn't feel like it was happening. Some of you, like when you go to work, you, you could relate to what I'm saying. So, so then all of a sudden, I, I left. I left my prayer. I come here early, you know, 7 in the morning. And then, I, uh, then I go to my office and I finish up on preparing, you know, uh, dotting the I's, crossing the T's, that kind of thing. But then I decided, well, I don't know. So I said, Sue, I'm going to McDonald's. I'm going to go get me a sausage McMuffin. You know what I decided? I decided that I was going to stay in peace. I was going to rebel against how I was feeling. I was going to rebel against not getting a word the way I thought I should. And, and I decided that I know that God is going to help me. Because I've been doing this long enough. I know that God is faithful. So you know what I decided? I decided to go to McDonald's. Sue says, well, I'll make you a, a sandwich. I said, no, I'm going to go to McDonald's. So I left when I really shouldn't have left. And I stayed in peace. And you know when I got back? Things started to click a little easier. Things started to come together. And it just seemed like things worked out. Some of you just got to go get a sausage McMuffin. Some of you just got to go get a cup of coffee. Some of you just got to go relax for a moment and know when you come back, it's all going to work out. Know when you come back, when you leave here, when you get home tomorrow, when, when you wake up Tuesday, the answer, the check is going to be the mail. That person's going to call you. The enemy wants to throw you off your game. God wants to excel you into your game. Don't worry about what you're going through today. God has you in the palm of his hand, and he's going to bring it to pass. God's going to work it all out. And I'm closing with this. So I thought. Somebody say, you better start closing, Pastor. Now the Philistines will come down against me, and I have not sought the Lord's favor. So I felt compelled to offer burnt offerings. So now what Saul did was he moved in his own. Oh, I, I, haven't, I, I haven't been to church, sought the Lord's favor. I haven't done it. Listen, it's not about you. It's about the faithfulness of God. Well, I've sinned. I, I went out last night. I'm not going to church. Who cares? Come to church and get cleansed in the, in the things of God and the blood of Jesus. Take communion. Listen, the enemy wants to keep you back. God wants to get you to your destiny. And let me tell you something. What I've learned, when the enemy fights the hardest, that's when God has something right around the corner. When the enemy fights the hardest and you, don't, you think it's all lost, that's when God's going to keep, show himself strong. My thought to you is don't worry about the things you're going through today. God has a plan for you. Don't overreact to that thing you're dealing with. Don't let the enemy have the best of your day. As a matter of fact, stay in peace. Allow the peace of Christ to rule you. Well, I'm going through it. Allow the peace. So I felt compelled. Here's what, and I close with this. Here's what.